Good morning everyone. Welcome to this third lecture of module 7. So, here in this lecture we will practice example on the important topics covered in this module that is stoichiometry of combustion reaction, equivalence ratio and excess air calculation. So, let us begin with the first example. So, in this example the ultimate analysis of coal is given that is carbon 79.2 percent, H 1.8 percent, N 0.9, S 0.7 and O 10 percent, ash is given as 2.3 percent and while the moisture is 5.1 percent in the given coal sample and the high reading value it is given as 27.7. So, based on this given data, we need to calculate the requirement of stoichiometric amount of air required for the combustion of 100 kg of coal sample. So, let us begin with the solution of this example. So, in this example, we need to calculate the stoichiometric amount of air required for the complete combustion of the given coal sample to produce the product. Now, if you see the product composition here, so here in this composition there is no oxygen here which indicates that the complete combustion of the fuel and the complete utilization of the oxidizer in the combustion process. So, now here the molecular weight of this component here that is carbon is 12 in terms of hydrogen it is 2 nitrogen 28 s sulfur that is 32 oxygen carbon dioxide water and sulfur dioxide so now the chemical reaction it can be written for the combustion of the individual constituents in the given sample if you recollect our discussion in one of the lecture of the module 1, we discussed this concept of chemical reaction for the combustion of individual constituents in a given fuel sample and as we discussed there, the carbon, hydrogen and sulphur are the main constituents which takes part in the combustion process and it get oxidized to produce product in the form of carbon dioxide, hydrogen it forms H2O and the sulphur it get oxidized to form sulphur dioxide. And considering here the 100 kg of coal sample composition from the ultimate analysis is given here that is carbon 79.2 kg, hydrogen 1.8 kilogram and sulphur is 0.7 kilogram. So, based on this given information, we can write down the mole balance and the mass balance for these three reactions. So, first let us try to write the mass balance and the mole balance for first reaction that is carbon oxidized to form carbon dioxide. So, from the mole balance here, the one mole of carbon from this reaction that is 1 mole of carbon is oxidized in presence of 1 mole of oxygen to produce 1 mole of carbon dioxide. Now, the mass balance from the molar mass that is on kilogram basis. So, C as we know the carbon it is 12. So, here also we have represented this reaction that is carbon plus oxygen it produces carbon dioxide and here the 1 mole of carbon is oxidized in presence of 1 mole of oxygen to produce 1 mole of carbon dioxide and the mass balance from this molar mass that is based on the kilogram. So, carbon here it is 12 as we know from this values here oxygen 32 and carbon dioxide is 44. So, the mass balance for actual mass on kilogram basis 
that is because we know the carbon from the ultimate analysis of the given coal sample is 79.2 kilogram and hence the amount of oxygen required to completely oxidize this carbon can be calculated using this small calculation here because since we know the one mole of carbon required one mole of oxygen to completely oxidize and form the one mole of CO2 and the mass balance from the molar mass it is 12 for carbon and it is 32 for the oxygen and mass balance for the actual mass in kilogram here it is 79.2 kilogram of carbon so based on that the amount of oxygen required would be around 211.2 kilogram that is 32 by 12 into 79.2 and similarly the carbon dioxide mass balance can also be calculated from this actual mass of 79.2 kg of carbon that is 44 by 12 into 79.2 which comes out to be around 290.4 similarly we can represent the mass balance for actual mass for the above reaction that is hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form H2O so mole balance here 1 mole of hydrogen oxidized in presence of half a mole of O2 produces 1 mole of H2O and the mass balance from the molar mass here it is 2 and since we know the molar mass of oxygen is 32 and since only half of this mole of oxygen is utilized to oxidize the hydrogen so it is 32 by 2 equal to 16 and it produces 1 mole of water that is 18. So now based on this molar mass we can calculate the mass balance for the actual mass in kilogram and it is 1.8 kilogram of hydrogen it requires around 14.4 kilogram of oxygen to produce 16.2 kilogram of water and here again the calculations are done in the similar way as we have done in the previous case that is carbon which getting oxidized in presence of oxygen to form CO2 and in the similar line the sulfur is oxidized to produce sulfur dioxide so again here the one mole of sulfur is oxidized with one mole of oxygen to produce one mole of sulfur dioxide and the mass balance from the molar mass that is on kilogram basis it is 32 for sulfur oxygen 32 and sulfur dioxide it is 64 so the mass balance for actual mass that is 0.7 kg which is known from the ultimate analysis of the given coal sample so the 0.7 kg of sulfur required around 0.7 kg of oxygen because equal moles and produces around 1.4 moles of sulfur dioxide so from these three mass balance equation for the actual mass we can calculate the total stoichiometric oxygen which is required for the combustion process that is 211.2 which is mass balance for the actual mass of carbon which oxidizes in presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and that is 211.2 and for hydrogen it is 14.4 and for sulfur it is 0.7 so once you take the summation of these three values it comes out to be 2 to 6.3 kilogram so that is the total stoichiometric oxygen which is required for the combustion process so this is the total stoichiometric oxygen required for the combustion of given coal sample and the oxygen which is already present in the 100 kg of fuel is given in this example so if you just recollect here the oxygen is given as 
10 percentage. So, the additional oxygen which is required for this combustion of the given coal sample is 226.3 and minus this 10 because this is the oxygen which is already present in 100 kg of coal. So, the additional oxygen which is required is around 216.3 kilogram of oxygen because the total stoichiometric oxygen required for the combustion of the given coal sample is 226.3. However, the 10 kg of oxygen is already present in the given coal sample. So, only the additional oxygen which is required for the oxidation or the combustion of the given coal sample need to be supplied for the complete combustion of the fuel and that is around 216.3 kg of oxygen. So, now based on this the quantity of dry air which is required can also be calculated because we know air contains around 23 percent of oxygen and that is by weight and this is the amount of oxygen which is required for the combustion of the given coal sample. So, based on these two values we can estimate the quantity of dry air which is required. So, that is 216.3 divided by 0.23 that is air contains 23 percent of the oxygen by weight and and once we calculate this value it comes out to be 940.4 kilogram of air. So, for combustion of 100 kg of coal it required around 940.4 kg of air according to this stoichiometry of combustion reaction. And in case if the pure oxygen is used for the combustion process, then the additional oxygen which is required for the combustion of this given coal sample is 216.3 kg of oxygen is required for the complete combustion of the given coal sample. Because the 10 kg of oxygen is already present in the coal sample. Therefore, the stoichiometric or we can also say the theoretical amount of air which is required for the combustion of 100 kg of coal is 940.4 kg. So, in the similar line we can also estimate the stoichiometric amount of air required for the combustion of the redwood. So, this is another example. Also, we can estimate the fuel to air mass ratio for the given fuel sample and composition of the product on mass basis. And once we know the composition of the product on mass basis, then we can also calculate the theoretical carbon dioxide percentage in dry flue gas by volume considering the stoichiometric combustion of dry redwood at 1 atmospheric pressure. The ultimate analysis of the redwood is given as 53.8 percent carbon, 5.9 percent hydrogen, 40.3 percent oxygen and close to around 0.1 percent nitrogen and similarly is the sulfur and this composition is given by weight percent. So, based on this given data we need to find out the stoichiometric amount of air for the combustion of the redwood, fuel to air mass ratio, composition of the product on mass basis as well as the theoretical carbon dioxide percentage in a dry flue gas. So, here this schematic it represents the combustion of redwood which consists of chemical formula that is CHO and it is combusted in presence of oxidizer that is air. So, in this case the fuel and the oxidizer are completely oxidized to form product that is carbon dioxide H2O and nitrogen.
if you recollect our discussion in the previous lecture we discussed about this concept of composition of the air that means it contains 1 mole of oxygen and 3.76 moles of nitrogen so here 1 mole of oxygen is accompanied by 3.76 moles of oxygen if the air is used as a oxidizer during the combustion process so if you look at this product composition here it contains carbon dioxide and h2o along with the nitrogen and among this product carbon dioxide and h2o are the oxidized product of the carbon and the hydrogen so we'll just try to write down this mass balance or the molar balance term for carbon hydrogen and the oxygen so now let us first determine the stoichiometric amount of the air which is required for the combustion of redwood so from the ultimate analysis we know the carbon hydrogen and the oxygen percentage that is by mass because as we are considering 100 kg of fuel as a basis for the calculation so the carbon content in the fuel is around 53.8 h is 5.9 and oxygen is 40.3 and the molecular weights is 12 for h1 and o it is 16 so based on this given information if you can just find out the number of moles that is in the form of kilo moles so it is simply 53.8 divided by 12 and it comes out to be around 4.48 similarly for h it is 5.9 and for o it is 40.3 divided by 16 and it comes out to be around 2.52 so if you try to normalize these moles on the basis of carbon content in the given fuel sample which comes out to be around 1 here that means 4.48 divided by 4.48 which is 1 and for hydrogen it is 5. 90 divided by 4.48 which comes out to be around 1.32 and for o it is 0.56 so based on this given moles in the feed material the stoichiometric equation for the given sample can be written in this form that is carbon which is 1 mole H 1.32 O 0.56 and it is combusted in presence of air. So this indicates the air that is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen and produces CO2 0.66 moles of H2O and 3.94 moles of nitrogen. and to balance this equation it require around 1.048 moles of air to completely combust this biomass to produce co2 h2o and nitrogen as a product of given composition and if you recollect our discussion in the previous lecture we represented the combustion equation for the biomass that is with oxygen or without oxygen so this is the equation if the biomass contains oxygen in its composition it requires this many moles of air to completely combust this fuel to produce co2 h2o and nitrogen as a product so let us try to write the mass balance for the given stoichiometric equation so since we know the fuel is oxidized in presence of air to produce co2 h2o and nitrogen as a product so from the mole balance one mole of fuel is oxidized using 1.048 moles of air to produce 1 mole of carbon dioxide 0.66 mole of h2o and 
3.94 mole of nitrogen. So if you write down the mass balance here, so the carbon that is 12 plus 1.32 into 1 plus 0.56 into 16 that is molar mass of oxygen here and it comes out to be around 22.28. Similarly, for the air it is 1.048 into 4.76 into 28.85 that is molar mass of air we are considering as 28.85 or sometimes you may find that we are considering it as a round off figure that is 29 and it comes out to be around 143.92. Similarly, for carbon dioxide, it is 1 into 44, that is molar mass of carbon dioxide. And for water, it is 0 0.66 into 18, that is 11.88. And for nitrogen, it is 3.94 into 28, which comes out to be around 110.32. So, thus the stoichiometric air, which is required for the complete combustion of redwood is 143.92 divided by 22.8 that is mass of air divided by the mass of fuel and it comes out to be around 6.46 kg of air per kg of fuel that is redwood here in this case. So, to find the fuel to air ratio for the given sample, the stoichiometric fuel to air ratio can be calculated using this correlation that is mass of fuel by mass of air and that is a stoichiometric quantity. So, we know the mass of the fuel that is 22.28 as per this stoichiometric equation and the mass of fuel is 143.92. So, it comes out to be around 0 0.155. So, the stoichiometric fuel to air mass ratio for the given sample comes out to be around 0 0.155. Similarly, we can find out the composition of the product on mass basis because the total mass of the product we know that is mass of CO2, mass of water and mass of nitrogen. So, here it is 44 plus 11.88 plus 101.32 and if you take the summation of these three terms, it comes out to be around 166.2 kilogram. So, the composition of the product on the mass basis can be calculated using this equation that is for CO2, it is mass of the individual component that is mass of CO2 divided by the total mass of the product that is 166.2 and it comes out to be around 0 0.265. Similarly, for H2O, it is 11.88 that is the mass of water in the product divided by the total mass of the product is 166.2 and it comes out to be around 0 0.072 and similarly is the nitrogen it is around 0 0.664 and this gives the composition of the product on mass basis. So, next is the theoretical carbon dioxide percentage by volume in dry flue gas and since we know the composition of the flue gas that is a theoretical composition of the flue gas which contains 1 mole of CO2, 0.66 mole of H2O and 3.94 mole of nitrogen. So, this is the theoretical composition of the flue gas which we have calculated from the stoichiometric equation of the given fuel sample. So, this theoretical carbon dioxide percentage by volume in dry flue gas, it is ratio of moles of carbon dioxide in a flue gas divided by the total dry gas moles and here if you try to take the note of this term, this is total dry gas moles. So, in that case, we need to exclude 
the H2O in this term and hence we can take the summation of only CO2 plus nitrogen and exclude moisture or the water vapor in the flue gas. And the moles of CO2 we know it is 1 mole and total dry gas moles excluding H2O is 1 plus 3.94 and it comes out to be around 20.24. So, the theoretical carbon dioxide percentage in dry flue gas is around 20.24 percent. So, if you recollect in the previous lecture, we discussed one important concept that is excess air calculation So, in that if you recollect the percentage excess air was represented in the form of following equation that is percentage excess air equal to mass of air that is actual minus that is mass of air stoichiometric quantity divided by mass of air again the stoichiometric quantity into 100 and so just by separating this term here it can be represented in the form of mass of air that is actual divided by mass of air stoichiometric quantity minus 1 into 100. Similarly, the equivalence ratio represented as fuel to air ratio that is actual by fuel to air ratio stoichiometric quantity equal to mass of air stoichiometric quantity divided by mass of air actual equal to the moles of air that is stoichiometric quantity again by moles of air actual and if we represent in the form of oxygen so here it is moles of oxygen by moles of oxygen actual quantity and this here it is basically the if you try to expand this term that is fuel to air ratio actual so we can represent this fuel to air ratio actual as mass of fuel by mass of air that is actual divided by mass of fuel by mass of air stoichiometric quantity. So, if you just rearrange these terms, so it is mass of fuel by mass of air actual into it will just become reverse it will be mass of air stoichiometric quantity by mass of fuel stoichiometric quantity so in this case now if you see this mass of the fuel which is same here that is for actual or maybe you can say for the stoichiometric. So, the final equation it comes out to be mass of air that is stoichiometric quantity by mass of air that is the actual quantity required for the combustion process. And in this 
equation here if you substitute this term from the equivalence ratio so this percentage excess air can be represented in the form of 1 by 5 minus 1 into 100 because phi equal to mass of air stoichiometric quantity by mass of air actual quantity so here it is just reversed of this term so that's why it is 1 by 5 minus 1 into 100 and that gives us the percentage excess air and if you simply rearrange this equation so we can write down percentage excess air by 100 plus 1 is equal to 1 by phi and then this phi equal to 100 divided by percentage excess air plus 100. So, this gives us the equivalence ratio. Say for excess air, this equivalence ratio will be less than 1 and that is why it is termed as fuel lean combustion. Thus from the above equation that is the uh, equation of the equivalence ratio. So from this equation we can represent the equivalence ratio as moles of air stoichiometric quantity by moles of air actual quantity and if you just rearrange this that is actual is equal to divided by phi. So, we can use this term to write the general stoichiometric combustion reaction equation for a solid fuel that is plus 1 by phi into A plus B by 4 minus C by 2 into oxygen plus 3.76 moles of nitrogen and which gives A moles of CO2 plus B by 2 moles of H2O plus 3.76 moles into 1 by 5 into these many moles of nitrogen plus these many moles of oxygen and this is applicable when the product flue gas contains oxygen in its composition and if you recollect we discussed this equation in the previous lecture where the oxygen is already present in the given solid fuel. So now if you substitute 1 by phi term from this equation here then the modified equation 
would be plus so instead of 1 by 5 we'll write percentage excess air by 100 plus 1 into a plus b by 4 minus c by 2 into this composition of air that is oxygen plus 3.76 moles of nitrogen and it gives a moles of CO2 plus these many moles of H2O plus 3.76 into percentage excess air by 100 plus 1 into A plus B by 4 minus C by 2. So, these many moles of nitrogen plus percentage excess air by 100 into A plus B by 4 minus C by 2 into oxygen. So, now in the exhaust gas the ratio of mole fractions between CO2 and O2 is that is mole fraction of CO2 by mole fraction of O2 equal to so mole fraction of CO2 we know that is A from the above stoichiometric equation and the mole fraction of O2 is percentage excess air by 100 into A plus B by 4 minus C by 2 that is this term here which indicates the mole fraction of O2 in the exhaust gas. So now after rearranging this equation, so percentage excess air by 100 will be equal to A plus B by 4 minus C by 2 into mole fraction of CO2 by mole fraction of O2 and hence the percentage excess air will be equal to A by this whole term into mole fraction of O2 into 100. So, with the help of this equation, we can calculate the percentage excess air required for the combustion of given fuel. So, to understand this concept of percentage excess air calculation, let us try to practice one example on this concept. So, in this example, the given fuel is burned under an overall lean condition 
measurement of dry exhaust give mole percents of carbon dioxide and oxygen as 10% and 8% respectively. So, with the help of this given data, we need to estimate the percentage excess air as well as the equivalence ratio for the given fuel. So, since we know the percentage excess air is represented as 100 into A by A plus B by 4 minus C by 2 into mole fraction of CO2 by mole fraction of oxygen and that is equal to 100 divided by this A here is So, this A here is 1 plus 1.32 by 4 minus 0.56 by 2. The given fuel is represented in the form of C1H 1.32 and oxygen 0.56. In general, the solid fuel that is biomass or coal is represented in the form that is C, H and O and here in this example, the fuel given here is represented in the form of C1, H 1.32 and O 0.56. So, correspondingly A here is 1, B 1.32 and C 0.56. So, we can use these values to calculate the percentage excess air which is required for the burning of this fuel. So, after substituting the value of A, B and C from this given fuel as well as the molar fraction of CO2 and O2 in the exhaust stream that is 0.1 divided by 0 0.08. So, it comes out to be around 100 divided by 1.05 into 1.25 and that is 76.19 percentage. Similarly, the equivalence ratio phi can be estimated using this correlation that is 100 divided by percentage excess air plus 100 which is equal to 100 divided by 76.19 plus 100 and it comes out to be around 0.567. And similarly, this equivalence ratio is also represented as lambda which is equal to 1 by phi and it comes out to be around 1.76. So, this is about the calculation of the percentage excess air which is required for the combustion of given fuel. So, in the next lecture that will be the first lecture of module 8, we will discuss the integrated energy system and concept of integration of the energy system. Thank you.